gentlemen, we're standing in amongst lots of goats. Yes, yeah, Judy and I started on this place in 1979 with about 84 goats and um, brought it through to what we've got today, which is 1,400 um, milkers. 1,400? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I guess you don't have names for them all. No, no, we gave that up a long time ago. <laughs> so obviously you, you've procured or, or leased more land around here? Yes, uh, over the years we've bought um, small farms as they've um, been come up for sale next door um, to the point now where we've um, got about a thousand acres of property here. Uh, there's some really good flats in amongst each block and there's some really good hill tops and the rubbish in the middle is not really very usable at all for so what you, we do it now. So you, you've sort of got a ratio of usable and not? Yes, we have, yeah. yeah. Uh, with a lot of northern farms, you know, it's not all good, good land that you can use for what you want, but that's okay. Very internal parasites. Yeah, when we started here, um, worms weren't an issue for those first two or three years, but over time, um, worms become more of an issue as the numbers build up and as you use more and more drenches they become more and more resistant to the drenches and by year 17 that we from when we started um, worms were a very very big issue and uh, our production had um, got down to about 25 or 27 k's of solids per animal per year and um, very fortunately at that point um, the opportunity came along uh, to put them inside a shed and, and start feeding them out of a trough uh, where they would have no more worm issues. So they didn't, they, they weren't grazing and so they weren't picking up the eggs? Yes, uh, very simply the, the, the larvae um, is dropped on the ground and can't crawl into the feed trough so um, th there's no worms in them at all. It just breaks the cycle? Yeah it does, Yeah, just like you've hit it with a big axe. Production figures? Yeah, production has gone from uh, 25, 27 k's an animal up to, um, we hope this year we're going to be very, very near to 120 k's of solids per animal. From 1,400 animals, that's um, quite an achievement, really. But it's more than just parasite controlled, it's also the feeding. Yes, that's, from when we put them inside, that's given us the ability now to to really concentrate on, instead of things like fences and worm control in animals, now we can really hone in on things like growing good quality fodder and so on for them. So we've, we're doing a lot in, the, you know, in growing decent fodder and, and different types of fodder for them. And yeah, that's shunted production a hell of a lot too. Barry, they're, they're very comfortable. There's no noise and they're just totally relaxed. Yes, I, was, I was, wasn't for housing animals um, initially, but having done it um, now, I'm sold on it. it, it I uh, liken it to if you went to Queen Street and um, said to some of the young people there, we're going to take you up to the Hokianga and you're going to have your own garden and grow your own vegetables and live a simple lifestyle because you know it's going to be a hell of a lot better for you. You know, uh, those young people would... Um, be very forthcoming in, in uh, a two-fingered salute probably <laughs> <laughs> and they wouldn't do it you know it, this is so nice and they've got a good social structure here foods on tap they get they get fed absolutely immaculately well these and looked after supremely well too what's the menu uh in the morning they'll they'll get um a big slathering of um corn or maize grain along with lucerne baleage uh, middle of the day there's um, the best quality grass we can cut and bring into them um, for a midday meal and then in the evening they're, uh, their belts are loaded again with um, grass silage that'll get them right through until the following morning when we come back and start again. And you're looking at using fodder beet? <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, fodder beet has um, certainly got some real interesting attributes. Uh, the main one being that it's, uh, the bulb is um, very high in energy, equivalent to maize grain, um, and yeah, it, it can be grown on farms. So and, and is you know price per kilogram of dry matter grown is very 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 cheap compared with buying grain. And so you're a market gardener with, with one set of clients, really. Yes, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. We've we've become more of. Um, not not a crop grower like you would get in Canterbury, but in, in this funny little sort of an area where we're a funny little crop grower in Northland, yeah. And obviously lucerne? 
Yes, it, it doesn't. It would thrive better if it was nice and dry at the moment, but um, it's surviving. And um, yeah, when we get the dry years, we'll be there sitting there ready to um, to fly with growing really good quality product for them. Finally, markets. Uh, all goes to the Dairy Goat Co-op in Hamilton, and all of their product gets made into infant formula, um, which is marketed throughout the world. Well, not, not throughout the world, but in different countries around the world. Yeah. There's some markets we haven't got into yet. You'd have a stake in that as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a shareholder, we, we, we have to own shares for every kilogram of product we send, or every litre of milk we send to them. So we're fully shared up, yeah. The returns are okay or worthwhile? Yes, they are, yeah. Um, but it's taken, uh, you know, 36 or 7 years or whatever it is to get to here. And, and it's been nice for the last four or five, but um, yeah, there was a lot of heartache getting to there, that's for sure. Is it an industry, do you think, that's going to grow? Oh, I think that there's probably some steady growth in it. Um, I'd be very... Um, cautious about any rapid growth in it yeah um like it's it's a really it's a niche thing mm -hmm.